Hello everybody and welcome to yet more Perpetual Testing! For today's map we're going to be having a go at playing Hopscotch and this was created by Fumbly Bumbly and recommended by Dot Milo so a very big thank you to the both of them and it looks like for the first time in about four maps nobody has cut me off mid-sentence and nobody has taken a shot at me so no interruptions today how refreshing! Okay so this map according to the description is described as medium difficulty however I am aware of Fumbly Bumbly's map making reputation so let's assume it's a lot harder than that and it involves wacky faith plate concepts which is a phrase which kind of worries me when you have a reputation like Fumbly Bumbly right uh, what have we actually got to play with you you are flashing at me meaning come look over here and I come and look over here and I see that you are a faith plate who is currently not activated uh, your ant lines run to something over in the direction of our already open and waiting exit behind some glass and situated behind an aperture glory hole trademark. Uh, we also have a blob of the bouncy blue stuff over here which is how we can bounce up onto here where there's more fave plates and a second fave plate and a little sky hooking action chucks us up onto this sort of sky cage type apparatus. Uh, where we can actually see where that ant line goes. That ant line appears to run to a button over in the corner and it looks like it also does some of those fancy concealed in the floor aperture convenience steps trademark. Uh, there is a hole in the wall there with a very important look over here arrow. That is probably a reset tunnel if this map's going to be a tricky one which I suspect it is. Uh, over this side of the room there is a button which connects to what scooped us up onto the sky cage. Two faith plates for some reason. And there is two cubes which are of different colours, meaning this map is going to be tricky as hell because there's going to be cube management involved and it's got a reset tunnel, meaning this could be a very, very long video. However, there is a button here. A button here gives us just one of the cubes. It gives us the blue one over on that raised science platform over there. Uh, is there any other reason to be up in this sky cage arrangement? No. Also, runway tracks. Runway tracks usually mean this way or that way depending on the orientation of said runway tracks so I mean that makes sense everything I want to get to is over there once we've worked out all the science over here so first thing I'm wondering why is there two faith plates this one just seems to do like a little hop onto the second one and that scoops you back up here uh, that is probably important and some sort of timing based thing anything else there's more science up there there appears to be where we can get our orange cube up in that direction and a lone single individual tiny panel here. So yes this could be quite a long video. Um, we want to get the one cube that we've gotten first which is up there. Uh, well the only panels I have anything to do with are you and you. Which angular wise should mean you chuck me up there right? That's how this game usually works. If we do the little hop onto the main fave plate through you yeah you launch me nicely up here both of these cubes have a receptacle pit underneath their delivery tubes however neither of them contain panels so cubes that land up here stay up here you go sit down there and wait for me whilst we work out what else is going on you see it's the it's the concept part in that wacky faith plate concept bit in the description that's what worries me on a map made by someone I know who makes very, very clever and complicated maps. Like, I hear that, and to me, that's like Stephen Hawking going, oh, you know, it's just a little uh, black hole theory concept that I've been noodling with. You know, that's that's that sort of stuff is way, way above my humble test subject pay grade. So what can we even do next? I'd quite like the second cube. Usually you want to get all the cubes you can. To get you, we need to get up there. To get you... We clearly kind of need to fly up that way, right? Uh, we should be able to do that if you do what I assume you do, which is lay this one ceiling panel nice and flush with the ceiling. Yeah, so if we put the blue back upon you, then that should launch us up to what clearly looks like a little landing platform kind of protrusion. So you, little hop, main fave plate hop, up onto you. Yes, very precariously upon the edge. This does actually give us access to a button. A button which delivers our orange cube. So to get that orange cube we probably do the exact same thing we just did before to get you. Uh, is there anything else going on up here whilst we're up here? Well the landing pad protrusion also kind of doubles as a diving board protrusion doesn't it? 
And in the current way it's all set up, you should just keep bouncing me here. That feels like something we probably want to keep in mind for future scientific endeavours. Uh, for the moment though, we should probably just get that other cube. So to do that, you need to come off of this button here, which reangulates that ceiling panel, like so. Then if we put the blue back on you there, we can go ahead and get that second cube. Why is there two faith plates? That is genuinely starting to worry me. That's got to be some sort of timing mechanism, right? Because you do a little hop first. Is that a timing thing? Like a cube would land on you and then go do things up there, giving me time to do something else? Realize they just chucked the cube I just got straight back up there, so let's go get that again. With the little hop and the main thrust, like so. Yeah, that's got to be something very, very important going on with that. Uh, for the moment, though, that is two cubes. Two cubes equals progress. So let's quick save there. And now I guess we work out how to get up over there. Um, it's got to be something to do with angles, and you're like the literally the only thing I can really play with. So out of you with a bunch of thrustful, not thrustful, that's an entirely different maneuver. Out of you with a bunch of momentum and height, will that bounce us over there? Where does that faith plate take things when we actually get it activated? And what does the glory hole entail other than possibility for bad, bad jokes? Um, now I'm going to avoid those bad, bad jokes. We're not making any glory hole jokes today. If you're thinking of gross, rude things to do with glory holes, that's entirely upon you. Um, so the only thing I can do is come out of you. And you did double as a diving board type protrusion, didn't you? But I need to change the angle to be able to get back up there. Well, that's where the button is, so technically, you are uh, get rid of a ball, which is not a word, but you know what I mean, and entirely respawnable. So if we get back up to that top level there, with the little hop, the main thrust, and air strafing backward this time, we can move that panel back into its angled alignment with you, yeah? Like so. That goes away. Technically, it puts you back up there, which is kind of awkward, but we'll deal with that later. And just looking at this now, you clearly are angled for that, right? And the fact that I can see that from here is good map design, meaning, hey, hey, look at this. Look, look, pay attention. Maybe you want to play with this? Which I do. I do want to play with that. Uh, let's put the blue on you then and see if this just sort of lobs us up that blue blob now. It does that. It is perfectly aligned. Okay, we slightly graze our head on the sky cage. But we do actually get over to here. Right, this button, this button is for an elevator. The all-important exit elevator. Uh, this sticky out panel does in fact have panels that we can make use of. And then we know there's that button up there. So are you a reset tunnel or are you actually just an elaborate long round the corner tunnel to get into here? Yes, that's exactly what this is. Which means whatever happens at the very end, we actually have to be in here which would explain the Aperture Glory Hole trademark. Um, well, I can see you from here, and I guess technically you, but if we're on you, just you. So whatever happens is probably done by cubes whilst we wait in here. And yeah, that will send us to the all-important exit. Right, um, now we've reached the concept where I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, we probably want to get that other orange cube back, right? But we need to be able to get back and forth here. To get back and forth here is probably why you exist. So if we put... Does it matter which one I'd move now? Probably doesn't matter who I move now. Uh, things going back from here should land on faith plates though, right? So if I put the orange here... Is that why there's actually two sets of faith plates? Because of this tiny little... Yeah, you always make sure that whatever goes through you lands on the main faith plate. Uh, that also chucks stuff up here because of the angularness of the gameplay. You know, that special angle thing that the game does that I often forget it actually does. So stuff coming through you gets it up here. So should I have brought a cube with me that I can chuck back through? I should have brought a cube with me. That cube with me. That I could chuck through there to come out of there to land up here which will turn the faith plate on and we can see where the faith plate actually goes to so 
stuff over here again. Let's avoid the fave plates. Um, we need that orange one again anyway, don't we? So that technically is you. And let's line this up properly. Let's get this orange cube again. You, little hop, main fave plate thrust, gets us back up to here. Then let's go stick you. Well, hold on, I've just gotten you again. Why did I do that? Well, I want to do this. Uh, then I want to have the blue on you again. And I want to take this cube with me up there. Are you going to let me do that or are you going to clip in a way that doesn't let me do it? So, little hop, main thrust, up here, faith plate to this. Right, then if we respawn the orange one again, like so, you have gone reangulated. Uh, put the blue on you. Then take you with me. You know what? Let's uh, quick save here. Take you with me. Through here, please come with me. Thank you. And great our head, and we get along here. Right, so to get the cube up into that corner, we can put the orange on you. And hopefully this is actually what those two faith plates set up is for. So if you go through here. Uh, without me being incompetent and throwing it completely awfully. Let's let's go and manually do that then. So you come with me. Little hop here. Bit bigger hop than that here. Then there. And there. There. The cube didn't come with me. Why didn't the cube come with me? Is it going to come with me now? No, it did not. I, I just want the cube to come with me. Uh, we could probably make it do it from there manually then, which would make a lot more sense than me trying to be fancy and doing it over that side, maybe? But then I do need a way to get actually back over there, don't I? Uh, actually, we could do that, couldn't we, with the blue on you? So move the blue to there. Orange is still on you. Makes more sense if I do you delicately from here. Like so, onto there. Comes out of there via gameplay angular momentum. Uh, that means that faith plate is actually activated. Does this faith plate go this way? This faith plate goes very specifically onto you. Which raises you. Yes, we know that. So, cube has to do that. Somehow we get a cube to pull that off whilst we're waiting in there. So, what other options does that give us now? Um, I do have these steps. Which kind of suggests, for some reason... I need to be able to get back up to here. So I probably need to be able to get you again. Although that disables both the steps and the all-important faith plate. Uh, whilst you're on there though, we have got a way to get over there and get over here from the like entrance uh, layer down here. So if we leave everything as it is for the moment, we're going to need to get the orange cube. To get the orange cube... We gotta fly back up there. To fly back up oh, to fly back up there. That's the one we can do without needing that button pressed, right? So that's actually quite easy. I do have to move the portals off of that panel, but you yeah, we just use you to get back up to that side. So hopefully that makes sense. Um blues on you. Let's move the orange back to that one there. And faith plate our way via the little hop to the main thrust. Back up to here where we can get you back. Right, now I've got two cubes. So... We need a way to be in that little room at the end there. Where we can reposition portals. To launch... One of these cubes, after we configure and work out the all-important cube swap. Yeah, okay, so... This is the part, again, the second part will go part two of the concept that I, I can't think of. We've got to be in that room at the end. That means everything that we do has to be activated from via the Aperture Glory Hole, trademark. And... That cube there turns on you. So is there an angle out of you onto the blue that would land a cube there? Like if I had it hopping in the hole there, you're doing, you know, the 
Straight up, straight down. I can't do the straight up, straight down. I can if I'm still on the button. Okay, let's try that then. That means... I'd be stood here. Um, I've got to move portals, though. Oh, that's okay. As long as that cube is on there, we can get over there easy enough. So if there was blue on you, and you weren't just out of my reach, uh, there we put the blue on you. I'm thinking this is wrong looking at it because of the distance between here and there. So I have to stay on this... I'd have to stay on this button... Get the cube onto there, so it starts doing the um, portal bobbing maneuver. Then get off of you, put blue back onto you, whilst you're in the air this side, so that you go over and hit that faith plate. Now I know what you're all thinking, that's completely useless, isn't it? Because I have to be over there when it gets anywhere near to doing anything like that, so I can't do any of that from here. Also, that gap, and you know, that's a lob, and I don't think that's a lob that we really need to be bothering with. Uh, so in that case... In that case... Um, in that case, part three of the concept which I simply cannot comprehend. Why Why the two faith plates? Is this a timing thing or is it an alignment thing? Get back up here. I could lob a cube off of here with the bit of height extra up from up here. That's not a unreasonable chucking of a cube. But again, like, everything has to be done whilst I'm up here, and there's no up here me to do that. This isn't thinking with Time Machine, and I don't have a clone to blame everything on that goes wrong. Uh, you, I don't want to touch you, that's respawnage. Um, so what am I missing? I feel like everything has to be done over there. So if I go over there, let's just go over there with this cube and see what I could actually pull off. Does it matter about the portals for the moment? You know, I only have three panels which I can actually play with portal-wise. So you take me up here and you go straight there. That would happily chuck a cube onto that button and elevate me to the exit. So, um, there's no way I could just drop a cube here and run round. That is very clearly made to be a long walk so that you can't just get there quickly. And you can't do that via you, and you can't do that by just dropping it off either. So, everything that does happen has to be done from in there. So to make things happen from in there, what can I even do? Um, so what if we left a cube on this faith plate without this faith plate being turned on, which would kind of suggest that's why we have a set of stairs. Because we could get this cube back, right? And we get that cube back, that turns off the faith plate below. So I could leave a cube on the faith plate off of this little bit of sticky outness here, which might be what this little bit of sticky outness here is actually for. Uh, let's quick save here, shall we? And now I'm trying to comprehend which cube it would be and if it would matter. Technically, you're the harder one to get hold of, which usually to me means you need to do the awkward thing. Then I need a way to drop a cube out of you. So that it hits the faith plates and then comes out of you to activate you to activate you to launch the cube whilst I'm waiting in there. Hold on, I gotta double check what I can see from uh, the Aperture Glory Hole. Trademark. Via the Aperture Glory Hole trademark, we can, can totally hit you. Very much hit you from here. That's like almost perfectly aligned for that. So whilst I'm waiting on here, have the cube drop out of there. To have the cube drop out of there, that means I've got to leave it somewhere it can actually drop through. The only place to do that is that one panel that's tucked around the corner. So I'd need to drop it through you somehow. 
Probably with the bouncing thing, the cube bobbing in the portals thing. Time it so that it goes out of you, back into you, then move portals to come out of here to launch it up there, whilst the other cube is waiting on the faith plate. Which means it is that panel as well from in here, so it'd be like boom, boom, and then get on here really quick. Which actually does mean that is probably a little timing thing as well. So, I need a way to drop the cube out of the angled panel all the way over there. And which one? Which one should it be? Uh, I can get over there easy. Easy enough with the portals left as they are. So if I leave a cube on the button down here, whilst it's off... I leave it on you. But then I need... a way to get up there? No, I don't need the way to get up there, I just need a cube to go up there. So what if... How can I drop it through that portal? So I'd have to have it doing the bobbing thing. It can't do the bobbing thing, because that's always going to be at an angle unless there's a cube on that button. So if a cube on that button... I need to do... something that I can't think of. Um, I feel like I might have broken things now. Can I get that cube back easily if we do... there and here? If I do this, can you just turn that faith plate back on for me? Because I think I've screwed up. I land up there on the button. Did it not land on the button? It's ever so close to the edge of the button. Can I go and do that manually myself? Hop and through. And get you onto here. That launches that up there. That has raised the elevator. I don't need that right now. So I need to leave this cube on a portal over there. I can't leave it on a portal over there because it's always going to go through. Unless... Oh, this is that thing, isn't it? That clever thing that no one ever uses because no one ever thinks of it apart from the really clever people. Which kind of makes me clever for thinking of it, if it is actually the right thing. And that thing is the thing where there's a portal without it being active. With no corresponding quantum tunneling portal? Uh, how does that work then? Um, um, so I need to leave a cube on top of a non-activated portal over there. Whilst you're all on like that, that faith plate means we can still get back up to that side. So going back to this side, ignore those. If I put you on here... I need a way to leave a portal underneath you, and I don't have any faith plates to touch. Um, so I need to get rid of one of these. I can get rid of you by standing on you, because portals don't like being on panels that move. So now if I move... I've only got an orange, so you don't currently have a corresponding quantum tunneling connection. So that means you won't go anywhere. Yeah, like that. Do one of them. Uh, then, then, that is still all active, so I can get back over there. Yeah, okay, this, I think, makes sense and is really kind of clever. You check me up here. We ignore that button. We go acquire you off of this button, which will deactivate the faith plate, so I was right thinking of having a cube waiting on the faith plate here, right? You land in the middle of that, like so. Then, we take ourselves, actually let's quick save here, uh, we take ourselves round the long awkwardness for timing wise tunnel to the aperture glory hole. And then, we work out the sequence. Uh, the sequence is most likely going to screw up, so let's quick save in here again actually. I would move... No, I'd put a blue up there. Cube drops through. Cube hits faith plate. Cube goes back up into the blue. So 
blue, orange. Blue, orange, me. Blue, orange, me. Yeah, I think that works. So let's try this then. Uh, blue, orange, me. You chuck a cube up into the corner. Can you activate the faith plate? That lands perfectly there after a slight moment of hesitation. And that takes us up to the exit. Okay, yeah, that that is a lovely designed little map with that. Uh, these ones always really impress me when there's like hardly any aperture hardware to work with. But somehow that makes the puzzle more complicated. You think it'd be easy, but it makes it more complicated. And it makes the design all that much more clever because of the uh, clever sets of reusing the select aperture hardware. That was Hopscotch, which now that I think about it, is a game of maneuvering with little hops between specific sequence of squares, which technically all the cubes just did for us in a rather fancy sciencey kind of way. That was Hopscotch, created by Fumbly Bumbly and recommended by Dot Milo. So a big thank you to Fumbly Bumbly for this map and for having a wonderfully fun name to say. And a big thank you to Dot Milo for recommending this one. If you would like to recommend a map for me to try and play, then please go ahead and do so via the usual means. And now until the next episode of Perpetual Testing, the zip tie that holds my headphones together has decided to slip and incorporate my ear into the superstructure. So I need to go ahead and take care of that. Thank you very much for watching. Until the next episode of Perpetual Testing, catch you later.